And so, let me ask you a trick question. What is the Word of God? What are the two forms that the Catholic Church recognizes as the Word of God? No, 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 no. Right there. The body and blood of Christ? Yes, but more specifically? Script. Wow, she just answered that two times. Scripture and tradition. So for Catholics, the Word of God is not only the Bible, but it is actually tradition. Because think about it, the Bible, it's not like it just floated down and went, hmm, right? Didn't just happen like that. The Bible was compiled with different letters that were written, and it was formed in the year around three, in the 300s, basically. So the question is, what did Christians do for hundreds of years before the Bible happened? Because they didn't have the, bold, the Bible as it stands now. Ever think about that one? No. <laughs> I didn't. But, uh, the tradition, the traditions that Jesus taught his disciples, they live those things out. And so, this is very, very important. And the thing is, the disciples, they followed these teachings. And you know how they were before, right? They were like making mistakes, they betrayed Jesus, they like went away from him, they weren't feeling it. But then after he ascended back into heaven, did you know 11 out of the 12 disciples were killed? They laid down their lives in defense of the truth, in honor of Jesus Christ. You know, you saw me wear a shirt maybe the first day that said St. Peter upside down on it, right? That's a design by my friend. The reason he put it upside down is because St. Peter himself, the first pope, he was killed under the reign of Emperor, I think his name was Nero, and that was back in Rome. And they, they were gonna crucify him, and he said, please crucify me upside down, because I'm not worthy to die like my Lord. It's intense, right? And so 11 out of the 12 disciples, excluding St. John, died a martyr's death in defense of the word of God. Okay, fast forward, 2,000 years, here we are, 2011. What does the word of God mean for us, right? Because the truth is, guys, people struggle with church teaching, okay? And unfortunately, we don't have a lot of time to go into like all the different things that we can talk about now. But people, honestly, even good Catholics struggle with church teaching. You know, the church is so clear on so many things. The commandments, abortion, contraception, euthanasia, gay marriage. You know, the church has very clear stances on all of these issues. And it's not out of like, we are so great, we know the truth, and we're going to bash you with the truth until you submit, submit to the Lord. You know, it's like not the way the church does things. Because the church opens its arms to everyone, all people. We're all sinners. But the church is very clear on these teachings. And now the thing is, um, when people struggle with that, I know myself personally, there were a lot of things um, as I grew in my faith and I was learning about these things, and I was like, why is the church like all crazy about these issues? What's the big deal? I mean, isn't there some gray area with these things? Like, what about this, what about that? And guys, it's never, never wrong to ask questions, okay? I'm not asking you to be like robots, run, 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 I will listen to everything and not think. No, it's important to think. But the thing is, don't just stop there and say, well, I kind of made the conclusion by myself because I just feel like it, that, you know? Because once again, if we follow Christ, if we follow Christ, there are demands, there are challenges. And Jesus says, if you love me, you will follow my commandments. And part of this instruction was being part of this body. Right? The church. And it is challenging today, guys. Let me tell you, it is not popular to be Catholic. I'm sorry to put it that way. It's not popular to be Catholic. Even more than it's not popular, popular to be Christian. We are Christian. We are the first Christians. But part of that reason is because when the church stays so true to teachings that do not change, we are shunned. We are pointed at. We are made fun of. Jesus said in the gospel, if they hate you, if they hate you, it's because they hated me first. If they hate you, it's because they hated me first. You see, the thing is, following Christ was never a popular thing. And it will never be a popular thing. But let me tell you this, brothers and sisters, it is the most important thing. Can I get an amen? Amen. It is the most important thing. Amen. Whoosh to you. <laughs> Now I know what it means. <laughs> I was like, really? You want to wish me again? <laughs> but it is the most important thing. Guys, Jesus 
is true. He is truth. It says in the book of Hebrews, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Church teachings don't change just because the times change. They stay the same. And these are the things, as I was talking about yesterday, because we've been created in his image, these are the things that set us free. Jesus said once again in the gospel, the truth will set you free. It doesn't mean it's easy. It is challenging to live the truth. And uh, one last thing, and I'll end on this note. Um, some of you ask me, you know, as Catholics, how do we, how do we dis disagree? How do we agree to disagree with other people? Because uh, maybe you feel singled out, or maybe you feel like, wow, maybe people will think I'm so narrow-minded or whatever. But the thing is, you don't have to ever be ashamed of your faith. You don't have to ever apologize for being Catholic. But the thing is, you don't have to be nasty about it. You don't have to be prideful about it. You don't have to go to people's doorsteps and tell them that they're going to hell because they don't agree with you. Because that won't let people over here. Anyways. But what you can do is, first of all, as we said earlier this week, um, preach the gospel at all times. But when necessary, use words, right? By your own example. But then there are going to be times where, yeah, you're going to have conversations with people. You don't have to apologize. But here's the thing. You have to be educated in what the church teaches and why. I had Mormon friends going up. And I didn't agree with anything they were saying, but, I mean, I appreciated them. They kept me out of trouble. You know, they're good kids. But the thing is, they asked me one time, they're like, so we believe in the Mormon church. What do you guys believe in the Catholic church? I'm like, uh, uh. My priest knows. <laughs> so like, I had no clue because I didn't know my faith. So here's another challenge, guys. If you don't know what the church teaches and why it does, it's important that you go out and learn. Or ask your priest. Or go online. And go to a credible source. Don't go to a source that is bashing on the Catholic Church. You won't get correct answers then. But learn why the church teaches what it does about the commandments, about these heavy issues that people are talking about all the time. Because unless you know the why behind the what, it just sounds like a parent going, don't do this, don't do that, don't have fun. Yeah, for a lot of people, that's what they consider their faith with the Catholic Church. But the Catholic Church is rich. It is beautiful, it is a gift, and it is a gift that you are here and a part of the church. So we can always charitably and lovingly and firmly share our faith with other people without being ashamed. You have nothing to be ashamed of. Because the truth will set you free. And so I'm just going to end right now with um, a quick clip. If you could turn off the lights, please. And it's a, it's a really cool, just like a couple minute trailer about just the awesomeness of our church and how big it is, how great it is. So you go ahead and watch this. Our family is made up of every race. We are young and old, rich and poor, men and women, sinners and saints. Our family has spanned the centuries and the globe. With God's grace, we started hospitals to care for the sick. We established orphanages and helped the poor. We are the largest charitable organization on the planet, bringing relief and comfort to those in need. We educate more children than any other scholarly or religious institution. We developed the scientific method and laws of evidence. We founded the college system. We defend the dignity of all human life and uphold marriage and family. Cities were named after our revered saints who navigated a sacred path before us. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we compiled the Bible. We are transformed by sacred scripture and sacred tradition, which have consistently guided us for 2,000 years. We are the Catholic Church.
If you've been away from the Catholic Church, we invite you to take another look. Visit CatholicsComeHome.org today. Ours is one family, united in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We are Catholic. Welcome home. God is good. All the time. All the time. God is good. Raise your hand if you're proud to be Catholic this day. Give it up for being Catholic. Give it up for being Catholic.